I thank the members of the media for joining us today. I'm here with Commissioner of Fire Garnell Whitfield and Deputy Commissioner of Public Works Henry Jackson just to give you an update on the first major snow event of the season in the city of Buffalo. Uh, we have no major issues to report, which we're very pleased with. Uh, we have over 35 vehicles out now, uh, working mostly in the side streets. Uh, last night, uh, after uh, snow uh, fall ended at around 9 o'clock uh, and visibility was restored, we were really able to make ground in the mains and secondary streets, uh, working there until about 4 a.m. Uh, all of the mains and secondaries uh, have had a pass through. Uh, we are now uh, working in the secondary streets where we have been since about 4 a.m. Uh, there is a parking changeover today uh, at 6 p.m. and we're asking uh, residents to be mindful of that changeover. Wherever you are in the city where parking changes, please move your vehicle uh, so that we can uh, get down your street. Uh, we also, um, uh, yesterday, recognizing uh, that uh, the Skyway was closed due to high winds, um, uh, blowing snow for the safety of motorists, and there was a tractor trailer uh, that flipped over on the 190, also a tractor trailer stuck on South Park. We had a backup of vehicles into uh, city streets uh, in the city of, of Buffalo. Uh, what we try to do is have um, uh, police uh, helping to uh, move traffic uh, at three points, uh, Tupper uh, at Elmwood, uh, Delaware, and Franklin, on Michigan, and on Niagara Street. Uh, with the vehicles that were stalled, though, it made it very difficult during the height of the storm uh, for motorists to uh, be able to move uh, at a good clip. Uh, going was slow yesterday in some of these areas uh, that were backed up. There was a, a bottleneck, uh, but we're very appreciative uh, to motorists for being very patient, uh, following the advice uh, to drive carefully, to drive slow, and as a result, there were no major incidents in the city of Buffalo. Um, tonight, uh, we are expecting more snowfall uh, in the evening hours. Uh, we um, uh, have uh, been told by the National Weather Service that it could be somewhere between another two to four inches of snow. Again, I want to just recommend to motorists uh, to drive with care, to drive with caution. I want people uh, to check on elderly family members and neighbors, make sure that they are okay. Uh, we are the city of good neighbors through this first storm. Uh, people responded in that fashion, and we've come through it uh, very well. With that, I'm going to open up to, well, with that, I'm going to turn uh, things uh, over to Fire Commissioner Whitfield. Uh, there were a few fires, and uh, Commissioner Whitfield will give you an update on that. Mayor, Thank you. Thank you. Do you have that microphone? Yeah, oh. we move that. Uh, I'm right here. Okay, that's fine. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, as the mayor said, uh, there have been no major incidents within the city of Buffalo, uh, uh, you know, in relation to this storm. Uh, we're very, very pleased uh, with the cooperation that we've received from the public thus far. We have had a few fires in the city uh, that are uh, related to persons uh, using uh, heating appliances inappropriately within their homes, uh, especially in the cases of where persons are trying to defrost or make sure that their pipes do not freeze uh, within their homes. We would advise persons to uh, absolutely defer to professionals uh, for assistance with the pipes and with their uh, heating appliance issues. Uh, you know, do not try to fix them. Uh, do not try to use uh, inappropriate appliances to heat your homes. Uh, we are concerned about the safety of the residents. We want to make sure everybody has a working smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector within their uh, homes, and that they're safe. Uh, we have had uh, several accidents, as the mayor said, none major, uh, but we just advise people to use caution, extreme caution, in times like these people are getting stuck. Uh, around the city and uh, again uh, you see in all cases where people are stopping and helping them uh, we want them to be safe uh, persons who are elderly or you know shoveling snow uh, be careful uh, out shoveling snow uh, because uh, you know 
you're very susceptible to uh, uh, health emergencies in this kind of weather. Uh, you know, get assistance from your family members, from your neighbors, uh, and uh, if you need us, uh, we are readily available to respond. Could you be a little more specific on the, the, the inappropriate appliances people were using? I mean, hair dryers, torches, face heat, what, what was going on? I think yeah. it would help people know that. Well, in, in, uh, in one particular case where we had approximately $30,000 damage to a property on yesterday, a fire was caused by people using a torpedo heater in a crawl space to defrost or make sure that their pipes did not freeze. Uh, that's an appropriate use of that appliance. Uh, you know, generators inside the homes uh, pose a carbon monoxide threat. Uh, you know, so as far as defrosting the pipes go, uh, we would ask you to call a professional uh, to assist you with that. Uh, these appliances are not made for that. Uh, you know, we don't want you drying your clothes on your, if you have a space heater or other kind of heaters, make sure you have adequate space around them. Keep your clothes and other combustibles away from those. Uh, just, you know, common sense safety, uh, you know, uh, procedures within this uh, weather event will keep people safe. Any injuries as a result of any of those fires? Uh, no injuries to report at this time. So, Mayor, getting back to the snow plow, and, and, and maybe even uh, yeah, sure. Um, how do you think we did, honestly? Uh, I think we did well with the uh, snow plowing. We worked in coordination with the County of Erie, with the Buffalo Board of Education, with the court system, uh, the Department of Transportation for the state, uh, the Thruway Authority. Uh, we made the decision to stagger uh, the uh, dismissal times of employees uh, yesterday uh, so that during the rush hour we would not have an abundance of uh, vehicles on the roads at the height of the storm and we think that that worked well so even though there were some traffic backups uh, in downtown because of the closure of the Skyway the tractor trailer tipped over on the 190 and the tractor trailer stuck on um, uh, South Park uh, it could have been worse if we didn't coordinate uh, the uh, staggering of times that employees would leave downtown um, uh, municipal buildings. Should Mr. Mayor, just tag on that real quick. You don't think uh, the staggered uh, dismissal of employees in any way contributed to the gridlock that I, I saw downtown firsthand yesterday? There was a lot of cars downtown. It didn't appear that folks actually left early. There were tons of cars in, in downtown. Uh, well, um, I can tell you that many folks did leave early. We think that the staggering uh, actually relieved the gridlock. Uh, what caused the gridlock uh, was the closure of the Skyway for safety concerns, uh, the tractor trailer uh, that tipped over on the 190, and the backup of a tractor trailer on South Park that created a lot of gridlock, but it could have been a lot worse if uh, employees at municipal buildings downtown were not allowed to leave early. Is there an advantage, Henry, to getting, um, like, what, what's, what's the best way to do this? Do you, do you, do you wait till it stops falling to plow, or what, what's better? Because no, so, some people would say, you know, go on out there and hit it, and others would say, why don't you just wait till it stops falling, and if you know it's going to stop falling in a few hours, what's the best strategy here? Well, um, the strategy that uh, Buffalo uses and most major cities uses is, is to um, plow the main streets during the snow event. You just can't see the effects or the results of it until after the snow stops because you plow a street and it's snowing right behind you. Okay. So that's what happens there. So did we learn anything, gentlemen, from yesterday at all? We, we use the plan that we have in our place already and we've been using the last few years and it worked fine uh, with no changes. Mr. About how many people talk a little about plan? the city when they were dismissed, about how many employees would you say? So in other uh, words, that, That's a little difficult okay. to say uh, because it was uh, city employees working at uh, downtown municipal buildings. It was county employees working at downtown municipal buildings. Uh, it was Board of Education employees, and it was court employees. So all totaled, it's a little difficult to say. Thousands? Uh, thousands yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely thousands of employees. Um, uh, the uh, staggering of time started at 1.30. Uh, the teeth of the storm hit at 3 o'clock. We wanted to get um, masses of people out of downtown before the, the storm intensified at 3 p.m. yesterday. Mr. Mayor, what, what, what little boxes do you have to check off before you make that decision? I mean, what, you saying, what criteria do you have to meet before you say, okay, I think we should dismiss employees? 
Uh, so the, the major criteria uh, working uh, with our various commissioners um, uh, and deputy commissioners, uh, public works, uh, police, uh, fire, uh, the National Weather Service, um, other um, uh, municipalities, other uh, state agencies, uh, county, um, uh, the court system, we, we determined uh, that we were going to see the storm intensify um, at 3 o'clock. Uh, and uh, if people waited uh, for the beginning of rush hour, uh, that could cause major bottlenecks uh, throughout the downtown. So we collectively made the decision that we would start um, an early uh, dismissal of employees, allowing employees uh, to leave early, well before the teeth of the storm uh, hit and intensified, and that worked very well. Uh, is there, um, it's, it's not exactly the same, these events are not exactly the same, but kind of a similar thing happening tonight or to south perhaps. Uh, any changes in the works for your plan of attack tonight? Uh, no changes. Uh, we'll be dealing with the parking change, as the mayor said, at 6 o'clock. Um, expecting snow a little later this evening, uh, only for a few hours. And then we'll start the same procedures, clean the mains and secondaries, um, and get back into the side streets as fast as possible. So we'll, we'll, should people expect more gridlock potentially? Or, I mean, if, if, if the plan is to, to follow up and do the same thing that we saw yesterday, perhaps a little bit shorter duration in terms of a storm, but should people... Plan, uh, plan ahead. Plan we're, we're, we're certainly hope, hoping that that will not be the case. As Deputy Commissioner Jackson said, uh, we're expecting snowfall uh, later uh, in the evening tonight. Uh, it should be after rush hour. Um, and so we don't expect the same kind of gridlock that we experienced yesterday. Hopefully there will be no accidents, no tractor trailers uh, that tip over our stuck uh, and I think uh, it should be a decent go uh, tonight but again we remind motorists uh, to take their time to drive with caution uh, and uh, it should be a good commute tonight. How closely do you work with, with the, the school department? I mean I know you don't make that decision when schools open or close but how closely do you work with the superintendent and the transportation uh, There's department? certainly uh, communication uh, between um, our departments and uh, the superintendent uh, and his transportation department. Uh, the superintendent makes the call, uh, but we do uh, provide um, uh, advice on what the conditions are uh, and how we can support them uh, in making sure that the children are safe uh, going to and from school. Mayor, tonight, talk about that switch over a little bit more with the cars, the importance of that, and what's gonna happen to the cars that don't get moved uh, from side to side? Uh, I'm gonna let, uh, uh, Deputy Commissioner Jackson speak to that. Well, as the uh, mayor said, we work with the different departments, so um, we have a direct line with the parking commissioner. I call him and let him know if we have issues. The plows, if they can get by, we continue to go and plow around them, but uh, we call for tickets. Will plow drivers be out all day, all the way through tonight? I'm sorry. Will plow drivers be out consistently all the way through Absolutely. tonight? You don't tell them. I mean, I'm sorry. The car. There's tow? many tows. Yeah, there are many tows. If, if the plow cannot get by and that street will not get plowed, they will many tow your car around the corner in the parking lot um, at that point. Also, if you want your street plowed, I imagine the best thing to do is to get your cars off the road so you guys can do your work. Absolutely. Uh, drivers are frustrated if they can't get that street plow because they take a lot of pride in their work. Thanks, everybody. And one more. Uh, one more. Just, you know, as we have all these folks trying to head out of the city, do you find that any routes are being forgotten that people should consider as an alternate out of the city route? Uh, we, we certainly um, uh, try to make sure that particularly in the case of, of yesterday uh, where we knew that we were going to have an intensification of the storm right before rush hour, uh, we had um, uh, traffic uh, uh, in place uh, to, um, uh, um, to manually manage the signals. Uh, so that we could keep uh, traffic moving as quickly as possible given uh, the conditions. Uh, the problem that we uh, faced yesterday is that many of the vehicles were moving out of the city in a southward direction. Uh, northbound was completely clear and there was no um, issues uh, moving northbound uh, into the city uh, or out of the city, uh, but southbound because of uh, the closure of the Skyway and the tractor-trailer uh, that tipped on the 190 
uh, and the tractor trailer that was stuck on South Park, it made driving in a southward direction uh, very difficult and there, very slow. Is there a better route besides uh, South Park to people consider? You know, there are certainly uh, local routes, but again, uh, things were complicated by the fact that there was blowing and drifting snow, there were whiteout conditions, and visibility was very low for people who found themselves out between uh, 3 and, uh, and 6 o'clock. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.